Hi everyone, it's a while since I've done a video but I just want to uh, do a video today to compare uh, original Singer sewing machine hand cranks with the cheap Chinese alternative or reproduction if you happen to need a machine where you want to convert it to hand crank. So we have this beautiful Singer uh, 99 which we bought uh, some time ago. It's an absolutely wonderful machine. I'm not going to do a full on video about it at the moment. Uh, this video is more to give information to anyone who's thinking about um, converting a machine to hand crank so that you can turn it like this. Uh, but you're having difficulty finding an original hand crank. So I shall compare the differences between original and uh, Chinese alternative. So in the next section, I will uh, slowly um, demonstrate the differences. So before we look in more detail about the actual quality of the original Singer hand crank, we'll just uh, confirm the weight and just show you. So this is the original one with the, uh, with the bolt. So that's coming in at uh, one pound 11 ounces. Let's see if we can switch that to for 771 grams. We compare that now to the Chinese one with the bolt that comes with it. So 300 odd grams lighter than the original. We'll just change that to pounds. 427. And it's coming in at 15 ounces. So, you know, nearly 10 ounces uh, lighter than the original. So there's a clear difference in weight, naturally. Let's have a look at the quality. So here you have the original, um, I think somewhere on it. You've got, you can see here, uh, the part number. And that's how you can tell it's an original singer, Simanco. And you've got part numbers on there. Really solid, heavy piece of equipment here. Cast, cast iron, I guess. Um, and here the pins and the forging of the handle is really beautiful. It's lovely and smooth. Um, it's been forged and, and mounted very, very nicely. And you can see you have this really nice locking button there. Beautiful wooden handle. In wonderful condition. Lovely patina on it. And you get a very solid uh, bolt that comes with it. And that mounts to the sort of mounting boss, I guess you would call it, on the sewing machine. So, as you can see, weighty, um, solid. Uh, this is the section here. It's got a little piece of leather um, that you can obviously replace. And this is the mechanism that flips when you put mount it to the machine, bolt it on. This locks, hang on, which way am I going? Yeah, this way. This locks into the, oops, more fingers and thumbs, into the wheel. Was it that way? No, it's not. I think it's that way. I can't do it now. There we go. That locks anyway. That locks into the um, the wheel as it's spinning around, and these rubber buffers. This rubber buffer kind of protects the the uh, wheel as it's turning around. So I would say very solid, beautiful piece of machinery there, made as you would expect in the quality of these early. I think this machine is early nineteen twenties or nineteen thirties. I can't remember the date of that machine. Now, if we compare it to the Chinese one, immediately you'll notice the difference in the weight. Um, it does come with this decal on it, and which I found so awful. That, <laughs> you can see there, made in the People's Republic of China. It mimics a lot of the decals on the machine. Um, it looks crooked. That's because I originally ripped it off. And then I thought, well, I'll put it back just to show you how it comes. It's very easy to remove the decal. Um, saying that, fingernails probably won't work now. So it comes off, it doesn't leave any marks. And personally, that's how I prefer to have it. I have bought a Singer uh, 66 machine, which is a bit bigger than the previous one you saw. And it, it's called a knee lever machine, which I'll demonstrate maybe at the end of the uh, this video. But what I would like to do is mount or have a possibility to hand crank it. And we couldn't actually find an original one as yet online. So I got this one as a Christmas present. It's functional, it does work, 
but um, you just don't know what you're getting when you see it on Amazon. So I thought that's why I'd make this video today for anyone who's thinking about buying one as an alternative. Um, I've actually sewn on here a little strip of leather around a kind of rubbery, a very thin rubber sleeve. Uh, that's that section, as I mentioned before, that sits in your wheel. Uh, this one kind of snaps. It snaps up like that and it goes down, locked into place like that. So the mechanism is completely different from the original one. This has more um, mechanics in it. Um, you can see to lock it in place. This is just a simple spring. There you can see. So I just stitched an extra bit of leather on it to pad it out a bit and give it ultimate, you know, as much protection to the wheel as possible. Um, the thing I think that is most mm, unsatisfactory is of course you're not going to get a beautifully forged handle and what you get is this kind of pressed handle here it's quite thin it's not you know it's okay it's smooth enough um, but one of the things that bugged me a little bit was the slack um, because that is literally um, the handle bent over and this is a three millimeter rivet in here so there's nothing inside there that is just the handle um, inside that three millimeter rivet um, so I intend today to do a modification on that and I will show you what I do later to try and take up the slack I'm going to take that rivet out and replace it with the three millimeter bolt that I did have at home and I'm going to try and fill that gap with some kind of buffer and I'll show you what I'm going to use later because although it functions okay when you're rotating and turning the handle at speed I just don't like that slackness or looseness in that handle um, so I'm going to be getting rid of that um, you also have this little pin here that you can see so when you fold the handle over this is more for storage that you can move it out it locks in place and it's okay it's you know it's functional um, but maybe not as elegant as this very nicely turned uh, pin very spring loaded pin much more heavy duty and, and beautiful I mean you can see there are screws around the casing here in case you need to service it and this one here um, has screws little screws on this side so you could take it apart if you want to grease it or whatever uh, that's not a problem um, the boss I just want to reassure anybody who has um, a singer 66 or 99 these are made to be compatible and this does fit perfectly on uh, that machine that you saw earlier and also on my other one so there's no worries about does this fit uh, for this particular brand of um, uh, hand uh, crank that we bought so that does work um, again clearly you can see another difference is in the handle we don't have that lovely wooden handle this is just well it's just a plastic handle um, again a little bit on the slack side but it's functional. I did gently sand a little bit of the seam down where it had been glued together. Um, but it does work and I can't complain too much about that. My real issue is the slackness um, in this handle here. I, I, I don't like that and I want to try and improve that. I am a member of the Singer 99 and 66 sewing machine sort of Facebook page where you can get some wonderful advice from owners there. And one guy did um, do a modification himself. He drilled through those uh, that section there and put a bigger bolt in to take up the gap. Oops, sorry, on there, I mean. Um, but when I looked very closely at mine, you can see um, that hole is actually very close to the edge. And so I don't want to drill uh, through that to make that bigger because I could crack and break that. I'm just not good at that sort of thing. So I'm going to replace it with a three millimeter bolt and fill that gap in. So I'll come back to you when I've removed this rivet, which I think will be very easy to do, um, and pull it out, and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with it. So I just want to show you how I'm removing this rivet. At first I thought I might need to use a hacksaw blade on the end and try and saw it off or file it down where the rivet has been sort of slightly crushed. But actually just using a pair of pliers um, on the end um, let's see if I can do it while I'm filming with you. I'm just gently pulling on the pliers and you can see the rivet, rivet is slowly coming out. Um, I'm going to carry on doing that off camera just so I can get a better grip of what I'm doing. But it's coming out very easily, as you can see. 
So I've managed to remove the pin or rivet without damaging anything on the uh, the mounting there. This is a, a three millimeter by twenty four millimeter uh, pin. You can see it's a little bit rough there where I use the pliers. So that actually worked really well. I did a little gentle bit of filing down with a, a file just to ease it along its way, but it came out very easily. And you can see, um, thankfully, well, you can see why drilling is not an option because um, the holes, oops, kind of, it's a little bit too close to the edge of the mounting. They're not in the center. So drilling was definitely not an option. Um, fortunately at home, I had a three millimeter bolt uh, I think this is about 27 mil long with some little nuts uh, and washers that I intend to use. So um, as you can see here, the handle now taking it off, um, you can see the slack. Why is that pin? Um, you can see the slack in the pin now. That's why it was so oops, try and focus it, wobbly and loose. So my intention is to fill that gap uh, in the middle. Um, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that in a moment when I get everything together. So what I'm playing around with at the moment is um, on the end of the handle, you might be able to see this is the size of the gap um, inside. And what I've done is if I gently poke it out just to show you. So that's the original size of the hole uh, left when the um, handle is bent round. And what I've got here is some um, three millimeter um, plastic tubing. Um, I think the correct name of it, obviously it's, uh, unfortunately it's in Deutsch. It says Isolierschlauch, um, or maybe isolation hose, uh, three millimeters. Um, very, very cheap, cost me 45 cents per, uh, per meter. And because my bolt is three millimeters, obviously it's the perfect diameter. And what I'm thinking of doing, I have actually just tried it, what I did was I put the, the bolt through, screwed it into the um, mounting, and there is a considerable improvement in the, the sideways movement. But I just want to do a quick experiment and try a little bit of shrink hose tubing on top of that, just to really try and fill it out a little bit more to see if there's no movement. So I did a quick experiment. It works really well and it's considerably better but I just want to see if I can do a slight improvement on it. So I'll come back to you um, with a section that I'm going to put on here, shrink it on, cut it to the right width and do a quick experiment to see how that works. So I'll come back to you and let you know how that goes. So I've put that section in. Here's the, the other section which I've trimmed a bit off with the shrink hose on it. Um, and, I, and it definitely fills the gap up a little bit more and slightly tightens the hole for the bolt to go through. So I'm going to have a go at fitting it on now and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like all fitted together. Hi, so I'm really pleased with my decision to add a bit of shrink rose to that uh, isolation tube. Um, it's all fitted in place now. It went on very easily. And as you can see, if I just demonstrate now, um, there is no, oops, I'll try and hold that to show you. There's no sideways play now in that handle. It just literally goes up and down. Um, I think actually having the rubber shrink hose acts as a, a nice cushion for it. So you can see it's much more solid, a much more solid feel, you know, when you're rotating without the slack in that handle. So I'm very pleased with that very cheap modification a three millimeter by 27 millimeter bolt, two washers. I may or may not add some Loctite to that little bolt. I might monitor it and see if it works its way loose or not. But at the moment it's fixed on there pretty tight and it doesn't really, all the motion on this is between these areas. So it shouldn't really come undone. Um, and just by adding a little bit of leather, as I said earlier, to this section here to protect the crank wheel, that's not a bad, um, sort of modification, simple modification to improve the feel and not necessarily the quality, just the feel of the action on this um, cheaper crank. It cost me, uh, well, it cost uh, us about 15 euros at the time at Christmas time. Prices now on Amazon have gone up to about 18 euros at correction, 24 euros. 
so the prices can vary so it's worth keeping your your options open when you're looking to buy one if you really can't get hold of an original beautiful original hand crank uh, like this one um, then th I would say that this is a good alternative in the short term uh, yeah I did remove the horrible decal uh, personally I didn't like the decal you don't get a black bolt with it you just get a simple um, a bolt here to fix it to the boss but that's okay that doesn't matter um, yeah you don't get a lovely beautiful wooden handle but I probably could if I could find a, a wooden handle um, you know get one riveted back on but for now I'm comfortable living with that I have, don't have a problem with it um, so I hope you find that mod useful if you've got something similar and you don't like me don't like that slack in the handle um, but I'm going to mount it onto the singer now and you can see it in action so I hope that's been useful let's have a look at it in action now so here we are with the uh, crank a hand crank fixed onto the side of the mounting on the side of the machine here with that bolt very important to get that lined up correctly um, you can see the just turn the hand up here here's the uh, the section with the leather on it and as you can see all you do is you just push it and lock it in, in between the crank wheel there so that you don't damage it as it's as it's pushing it around like that um, handles locked in place so you can see with that little pin there there's none of that sideways slack that we had in the machine before and it's a little bit difficult to do because I've put it on a turnstile but you can see the machine working there very nice smooth action so I'm very pleased that I think that modification is certainly just for me personally allowed me to cope with that slack a bit in that in the uh, the connection there. Um, it's a cheap modification and it does certainly enhance the feel of this machine. So I hope you enjoyed that uh, video today and it helps you a in your decision if you want to buy a cheap Chinese hand crank until you get a new one or you might even just settle for this and think I don't need to buy a new one which could be pretty expensive um, as I said I've been working and tinkering a lot on my other sewing machine and I may do um, a video on that in the future just to give you a quick overview of the, the things that I've done to it it's a beautiful machine that I picked up and I'm currently considering how to restore the motor on it uh, but I always think having a hand crank is great. In these days, well, if you don't have access to power, you can still sew off-grid. Uh, we use it for making all sorts of really useful things. Um, and so, yeah, I've really enjoyed tinkering with this uh, particular machine, this one in cleaning it up and restoring it, and also my other machine. So in the meantime, take care, everyone. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found that useful.